Okay, here we're going to investigate some of the factors that shape climate. So there's many things that play into a, a particular region's climate. And we're going to look at some of those factors and how they influence it. So the key factors that shape an area's climate, and here I have some uh, an outline of the geographic area of the world and some of the typical climates we might be uh, familiar with or associate with different areas. And the key factors that shape these are temperature, uh, water or moisture content, the sunlight, soil, and wind. Now sunlight might be a weird one. We think, oh, it's the earth. We're still getting the uh, sunlight. But keep in mind of the different amount of sunlight that may occur at extremes at the pole regions. How during the summer in the northern hemisphere, uh, way up near the Arctic Ocean, Arctic Circle area, you may get close to 23, 24, hours, almost 24 hours of continuous sunlight. In the winter, they may get the flip of that of almost complete day of darkness. So that can be what I refer to as sunlight. So let's take the first one here. Temperature influences natural plant life. You may have heard of the USDA plant hardiness zone map. This is referring to kind of the average temperature in these various regions. It might be a little hard to see here, but as you can see in general, looking at the colors, these areas tend to be colder uh, and planted to be able to be hardier to more harsh or cold conditions than the colors here tend to be more mild. Now I'll notice it's not a perfect kind of based on degrees of latitude. See this kind of western coast area, very similar to the um, southern southeastern regions of the United States. So this can be located or based on proximity to water, uh, particular oceans and how it's more mild in certain areas, or mountainous based on elevation here where it's a lot colder, a lot further south. So land masses can also shape climate. There's, a, As I mentioned, there's these coastal areas that tend to have smaller changes in temperature, and mountains can have a large effect on climate because it can cause precipitation. So we have the western and kind of eastern slope, well, the western slope, again, if we're looking here, western slope being here of our Sierra Nevadas, the western slope is going to be much more lush. Uh, a lot more water is going to occur. There. A lot more precipitation is going to occur. Because that water is basically getting kind of squeezed out. Then on the eastern slope, or kind of the backside of, in this case, the mountain range, it can be a lot more arid, a lot drier. Because that moisture gets squeezed out on the western slope, and that leaves it less to be on the eastern slope as that moisture kind of comes down the other side of the mountain, creating a very dry uh, particular uh, type of climate on that side. We can kind of see that here we call it the rain shadow, where we're looking at the prevailing winds on the uh, westward side, kind of compressing and condensing that water, causing a lot of rain events. You can see very uh, lush greenness here, and here by the satellite image. And then on that other side there, the dry air advances, and there's something called that rain shadow. It's very arid or dry. And we see that clearly evident here with a lot less lush green plant growth. And we can see now, we look back at that western slope and eastern slope, how that western slope has a lot more um, those trees, a lot more vegetative growth, and the eastern slope being a lot drier. And maybe this kind of sideways image of the mountain kind of shows that Western slope here, being squeezing all that, um, condensing all that water moisture out, and then that eastern slope being a lot drier, that rain shadow evident. So we're talking about water. You can see the water here, uh, different types of uh, rainfall we're looking at. Typically, the Gulf of Mexico region here can get a lot more rainfall, uh, and overall, the eastern half, or kind of that Mississippi River east, tends to get more rain the Mississippi River West in particular. So again, it can kind of impact an area's climate also. This kind of shows a nice little progression here of the different months and the typical um, inches of rain or millimeters per day of rain on average and where that tends to occur uh, over the different months of the year. And we can see clearly in this kind of band right here uh, a lot of rainfall overall. This portion of Africa, the northern part of Africa, remains very dry. Uh, this is, there's a lot of deserts located here. Uh, so it's going to be a much drier region than the closer to the equator area here. And those darker blues indicating a greater amount of rainfall on average per day over uh, the courses of the month that we see here and over the year. 
Now, some, as I said, latitude has a great influence on this. Uh, looking at the um, amount of sunlight that different regions get, again, we would think it'd be a nice kind of easy influence here where equator gets the most and the poles get the least. Uh, there is uh, some slight variance amongst that, but latitude does have the greatest influence. Odds are the closer you are to the equator, the more direct uh, over the course of the year sunlight you'll receive. Also have soil types, so these global soil regions, and we see these many different soil orders. These all have independent uh, properties and qualities, uh, some better for growing crops, some better for supporting plant life, others uh, not as supportive of plant life, and we can see that they are quite variants uh, across the globe here. We see some uh, consistency in the northern regions, these desert regions here, and if we kind of looked back at the water, we could see that ha also has an influence on the type of soil that's present in the different regions of the globe. Lastly, we have wind, so land-based and offshore at annual average wind speed at about uh, 80 meters. And we can see areas that tend to be windier, tends areas that tend to be calmer. Uh, this can also impact an area's climate. Uh, there can also be an impact on whether companies can invest for wind turbines as alternate forms of energy. Uh, but wind can also uh, impact an area's climate. Typically near the coast, it can be windier uh, than more mid regions, or proximity to mountainous regions can also impact uh, the average wind speed in a particular area.